welcome in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a one sample binomial test using Microsoft Excel on the left here I have my data about gender and it was coded one was coded for female and two was coded for male and it was also 99 as you can see here for no response and if we scroll down we can see that there were 56 in total minus the top one so 55 um, the expected proportion that I have for females is 0.5 so I can actually say that the other one is going to be 1 minus the 0.5 and the sum of these two is simply of course 1 that way we know for sure that it's 100% let's start with counting the number of items we actually have in each category so I can use a count if for that count if column is going to be column A and my criteria is going to be this one and then I can copy paste that down and the total alt equals is the shortcut for some and these expected proportions are simply this one and I can also copy that actually down what we need is the minimum actually it doesn't really matter but it's useful to actually select the minimum so I'm going to say min out of uh, these two up here and that's going to be 12 so um, so that's actually not h6 but i6 and then the expected proportion that belongs to that can be found by using the lookup I'm going to be looking up this 12 and that's going to be looked up in this table and I want to see the second column and it's going to be an exact match so of course that's going to be 0 0.5 because everything at the moment is 0 0.5 now to determine the one-sided significance you can either use the new binom uh, dist which can be done by binom dot dist and then the number is actually the minimum the number of trials is uh, the total 46 and the probability that we have um, for success on each trial is our expected proportion and we want it to be cumulative so set to true now if you have an older version of Excel you can still use also the binom o oh, binom dist function that's the old one and actually the same so it's 12 in my example the minimum then the number of trials and the probability of success and last but not least the true that we want it to be cumulative so this actually shows the chances of having 12 people or less in a group of 46 if the chance of people belonging to that particular group is 0.5 now the easiest way to actually get the uh, two-sided is then to simply multiply the one-sided by two so we do this one times two now this is all fine in case you actually have an expected proportion of 0 0.5 so then you're actually done but if that is different then the doubling is not the nicest way to actually go so let's say that instead of 0 0.5 we have 0 0.3 up here now in that case this one becomes 0 0.7 and because we use cell referencing everything here changes however equal um, the alternative is usually or as extreme now there are two approaches for this which is option two and three and these are known as equal distance and the method of small piece now the equal distance actually first determines the expected count so how many people did we actually expect so we can do that by simply taking our total and then multiplying that with our expected proportion which in this case was 46 times 0.3 and that actually gives us 13.8 now we actually had 12 so our distance from the expected is this one minus the what we actually have so 1.8 so we have 1.8 people below what we expected so to get the other side we need to see how big is the chance of having 1.8 more than we expected so we could calculate that by simply saying well I'm going to do the binom dot dist and then I'm going to take 
this value and then add this one and then I'm going to subtract one and I'm going to say that my number of trials hasn't really changed that's still this one my expected proportion also hasn't changed and I still want it to be true this gives me everything to the left but I want it to the right so I'm going to be saying 1 minus all of this and that's why I added the minus here as well and that way it actually does the correct right tail so that's 0 0.4031 and then therefore the two-sided test will simply be the one-sided test plus our right tail and that's going to give us 0 0.74785 in this case now you can combine the two in one go so uh, you can simply put it as a range that's a new function I already copied the function here so I can simply do a copy paste and oops it seems to have just missed uh, one there uh, let's see what's going on oh well it's doing the range thing so what I can say is well I'm going to use binom dot dist dot range and then the number of trials well the left uh, range uh, that's four or sorry that's the the full number of trials so that's that one my total sample size um, then it needs the I13 so that's the probability of success and then what it's going to need is my uh, one that I actually have so that's uh, this one up here and then we actually add a 1 to that and we're going to do as an upper end of the scale the 13 plus the J, um, the 1.8, sorry, minus 1 again, and that gives me the entire range as well. And we want the opposite of that, so again, we get the same result. Now, there's another method which is more commonly used, which is known as the method of small p. So, the first of what we do here is we actually take that minimum, that's that one and then we just calculate the chance of having exactly 12 people out of 46 with the probability as in our null hypothesis or the expected proportion and we can simply do that by using binom.dist the number of trials is the one above it the total number of trials is the 46 the expected proportion is going to be uh, this one and in this case we don't want it to be cumulative so we set it to false and we do need to fix a few things the total number of trials is going to be fixed so put dollar signs around it or press F4 click on the I13 because the probability is also not going to change and we're done then here I want the same one but then one higher and I can copy paste this one now and it nicely calculates the probability for exactly 13 I'm going to copy all of this to the side until I reach my total sample size I already have a small indicator there so up till 46 and you can see it becomes extremely small if I made this one slightly bigger then you can see that it's not exactly zero but it's very very small now this method of small p actually says well uh, the right tail is any of the values that are uh, equal or below this one so what we can do is a sum if sum if and then the range is uh, going to be all of these values and the criteria is uh, going to be that this value should then be less than so use the quotation signs less than or equal to and we need to concatenate that so we can simply use the and sign for that this one that's the right tail so now we can actually add these two together so again the one sided plus this right tail and this gives me 0 0.63 so you notice there's a small difference between these two and that's because one does include um, I think the 15 it is and the other one doesn't but 
this one, the option 3, is more commonly used. Notice that if I change this back to 0.5, then in this case all methods will actually result in the same. So uh, to just the doubling, 0 0.00164, uh, the equal distance, and also the method of small p. So if you have just the 0.5, it doesn't really matter. Okay, as you might also have noticed, I have a user-defined function I made that actually can do all this in one go for you. Um, if you're interested in this spreadsheet, let me know. I'll um, then post a link to it. And if you enjoyed watching this video, then please subscribe because that really helps. And hopefully it was useful. Thank you for watching and your time.